Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're jumping back into Resident Evil 4 Remake because I want to talk a little bit about the mercenaries. This is our free add-on that was just added last night. And alongside of it, there were some microtransactions added as well. I want to talk a little bit about that because it seems like there's a lot of divisiveness over on the Reddit and people talking about this. I just want to give my two cents about it as well. But let's talk about the mercenaries first. This mode introduces three areas that you can play with four characters. Those three areas being the village, the castle grounds, and the island. The four characters being Leon, Luis, Krauser, and finally we have Hunk. Each one of these characters featured their very own unique special ability. So for example, if you're using Krauser, you can actually transform with the Las Plagas and have full control over it. It's really awesome. When you're playing as Leon, you get added speed. You also get added damage against any weapon that you're using. You reload faster, you move faster, pretty sweet. Luis is able to place down dynamite. You can shoot the dynamite manually or just let it go off on its own. And then finally we have Hunk and Hunk gets the ability of unlimited ammunition in his MP5. And this can do some pretty big damage. Overall, these special abilities add a little bit of flair to the mercenaries mode that I wasn't really expecting. Now, admittedly, I haven't played the game since I uploaded my entire playthrough here. I've just been so busy in real life that I haven't had a chance to sit down and play it. So you can imagine my surprise when I started playing through and getting the S rank with Leon and all three of these maps, I was greeted with this. I unlocked the hand cannon. What? Just by completing three levels at S rank? That's actually very, very easy to do. This is my first try, by the way, on each one of these levels. Unlike the original RE4, where you had a five-star ranking system, this one goes all the way up to S++. And I really wasn't expecting to unlock anything with just a standard S score. I thought I'd have to get S++ on every single character, on every single map, before unlocking something like the hand cannon, but... You don't have to do that, which means this is super, super, super obtainable for pretty much every single person out there. And this is bittersweet. I've seen lots of conversations over the past 12 hours about this. Some people are saying, you know, yeah, it's great because I don't have any interest in playing professional. I don't have any interest in playing hardcore. I just want to use cool bonus weapons. It's the same reason why every single time we have a remake of these games, there's a DLC that eventually comes out that allows you to buy every single collectible, giving those players who may not want to go through the challenge access immediately to everything. And generally speaking, for both of the remakes that we've gotten so far, this happens around three months after the game releases. I would imagine Resident Evil 4 is going to be the same exact way when it comes to all of the collectibles. There are people out there genuinely who just want to buy the stuff and experience the game and waste all the enemies away with infinite ammo. And I don't blame them. It's really fun to do that. I actually love the fact that more people are able to experience more of the weapons in the game, even if it means they have to, uh, you know, play something else in order to earn them. But I will say it's a little bit disheartening, and I, I could definitely understand the perspective of all of those people who did that grueling slog through the campaign to try and secure the hand cannon through the professional mode. It's not an easy task whatsoever. So I totally, totally get why people might feel a little hurt angry annoyed maybe even betrayed i know that there were so many people wondering what type of unlocks we were going to see and many people said maybe we're going to see the prl 412 after getting you know s plus or five star ratings or whatever on every single character maybe that's what you'd unlocked but even obtaining s plus plus on every map with every character that currently exists doesn't unlock anything which is kind of weird so yeah um anyway let's talk about the microtransactions I noticed this when I went to download the mercenaries this morning, but you're now able to actually purchase exclusive upgrade tickets. So as it sits right now in the US store, $2.99 for a single ticket, $6.99 for three tickets, and then $9.99 for a total of five tickets. These tickets allow you to get instant exclusive upgrades on all of the weapons in the game. So each ticket can be used for one weapon, and these exclusive upgrades can increase the overall damage and in some cases give you infinite ammo, like in the case of the hand cannon, which the Chicago typewriter hand cannon combination is what a lot of people have been using to get their S plus runs on professional difficulty, which requires you to beat the game in under five hours and 30 minutes. And you're not allowed to save more than 15 times. If you save 16 times, the run is dead. You can only save a total of 15 times. 
And you're also not allowed to do this in New Game Plus, meaning you can't take over your entire inventory. But bonus weapons are okay. So if you have the hand cannon unlocked by completing the professional mode in general, or of course the uh, new route by getting the S ranking in the mercenaries will help you unlock it, then you can actually utilize this for your S plus run. Here's the thing though, just by playing the game and completing the merchant's requests, you'll be able to get an exclusive ticket in game without spending any money just by playing the game. But you're not going to get the infinite ammo until around chapter five when you start the castle. With this purchasable exclusive upgrade ticket, you can get infinite ammo by chapter two when you first meet the merchant pretty much right after the village fight. Just out of morbid curiosity, I decided to pick up one of these tickets for $3, doing exactly what they want me to do, and I wanted to see what it looked like in game. There's actually a distinct difference with the normal ticket that you would get and the paid ticket. It actually says it's paid and it gets a different logo on it. That way you know if the person you're watching actually paid for it or whether or not they got it just by playing the game. But effectively, this is gonna make S plus runs really, really, really easy. But at the end of the day, none of this really matters. And the reason I say that is because in just about a month or two, we're gonna end up seeing them do a unlock all thing for $4.99 most likely, giving everyone the ability to unlock everything in the game, no matter what. Even if you just bought the game, you can unlock everything and play to your heart's content with any piece of content that's there. Is it a little annoying? Sure. Is it going to make S plus runs easier? Yeah. Is it pay to win? Absolutely. And just kind of going back to the conversation of the hand cannon being so easy to unlock, I feel like they did this on purpose for the sake of selling those tickets that now exist in the shop. Um, you know, obviously if people were having a tough time playing through unlocking the hand cannon by themselves, but they really want to go for that S plus run, or maybe they want to unlock something in hardcore. Think about how much easier it is to do with the hand cannon with infinite ammo. You could basically use just that throughout your entire playthrough and do just fine. But I gotta admit, it seems a little too coincidental that this is all happening. So I'm just going to assume that this was a business decision. Make one of the most powerful weapons in the game super easy to unlock in 30 minutes and then give us a fast track with the paid tickets that you can pick up for three bucks. And I honestly never thought I'd be sitting here saying I just bought a microtransaction for Resident Evil 4 after playing this game for so many years of my life. Uh, but here we are. Um, I guess I guess I could say that. The Mercenaries mode is awesome. I really, really like just exactly how they have it set up. I'm a really big fan of those special abilities. It allows you to extend your overall game time depending on how strategic you are. And if you're getting into a tight situation, activating those abilities basically grants you a little bit of additional breathing room because it'll push enemies away when you activate it. I like every way that the maps are set up. The bosses come in and it gets terrifyingly difficult, especially if you're playing on the castle level and the guard doors come running towards you. It can be very, very tough. But my one ask of this mode is to continue supporting it even beyond the leaked characters, which are Ada and Wesker. I want to play as them, obviously, but I want to play as more characters. It'd be awesome if we saw an extension to the amount of things that you can unlock as well. If we got a whole new set of challenges with new unlockable items that give you new benefits and bonuses while playing through the main campaign. It would be fantastic to have this happen, and I know I'm not the only one thinking it. Out of all four characters that I had a chance to play today, I think my favorite is Krauser. Runner-up is Hunk for sure, but Krauser is crazy with the blade, man. He is just super fast. He's able to almost like teleport straight forward, and when you start to use the Las Plagas and you mutate, giving you that ability to just basically impale everyone in front of you grants so much breathing room, but at the same time, it's easy to get overwhelmed, especially if you only have a knife and especially if you're not able to ready that bow fast enough. But that's it. I like the mercenaries. I can't wait to see what happens with it moving forward. I'm excited to see just exactly what type of unlocks will come in the future. And not only that, hopefully they continue to support it. If you guys enjoyed this commentary here today, do me a favor, drop a like on it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.